Tá. Uhum. What's up, y'all? Hello. How's it going? Going well. I'm working on catching up, getting getting drunk enough that I can do this thing. You know, I made a mistake. Drunk enough to do Shakespeare? I made a mistake. I ate dinner before before. Yeah, I well, Dono. I think we all remember Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> so now I've got I've got this bottle of lemon rum, and I've I accidentally almost half of it. Ah. <laughs> accidentally. Yeah. Hi, Nicole. Oh. How's it going, Donna? Are you doing good? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Kind of bored, but you know. And by the way, you should join us for Zoom Shakespeare. Okay. Isn't that what now we're doing right I now? Am well, this is the other. This is Nicole's video. Nicole drunk time. Oh. Whoa, Nicole, you're floating. Uh, so my background didn't come over. I have mm -hmm. to change it. That's a fantastic I don't know how to change picture it to of the you, app itself. Hmm. Hey, Nicole. Hey, how's it going? Great picture of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the oh, little... Really cute. Thank you. Yeah. How's... The video is less... Great. How's Hawaii? <laughs> it was nice. Um, that was... What show was that for? That was a few weeks ago, actually. Something else. And I'm trying to figure out how to change the background. Somebody was in oh, the Tempest. I see it. I think. Um, San Francisco. We'll just go with none for now. And my closet. If you get a join request from someone who you don't know, it might be James, the the CEO of the studio I write scripts for. For some reason, oh, cool. he's like, "Send me a link. I want to see this." Probably because I told him go. that I that I accidentally drank half a bottle of rum. Before nice. We did this. <laughs> I've been I've been day drinking a little bit off and on, so I'm kind of even even feel on my buzz. All like, right. How do you like Orson's, Orson's house behind me? Oh yes. Fantastic. Very sixties chic. Yeah. Thought that it's was great. fun. It's very proportional too. I actually thought it was your house until I looked very it's closely. Only. It's a very nicely decorated house. I wish. I well, need to get I mean, it's, it's... our script. Our script pulled up. I'm trying to see. Oh, here we go. Here's more participants. So it's two me and you guys. I love. I, I love we're... that. Um, I love that Seth and Sandra are playing brother and sister tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I asked. Uh, I asked her if they had ever played brother and sister before, and she said earlier this year they had played um, mother and son. And I was like, "Oh, okay. So you're, you know, used to awkward, awkward on stage." Yeah. <laughs> Admit. Okay, so we have some other folks joining. Mm -hmm. I have those same mugs. I love them. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm They're great. They remind me of my childhood. My parents mm -hmm. had them too super hot in here. Okay, I'm gonna grab my drink. It's a cute top though, Nicole. It's a full dress. Oh my god. It is, it is a fun one. Thank you. I like it. It's very, uh, very 60s. Mm -hmm. All right. I didn't so let's have... see, who do we have on the iPad? Is that Melissa? Who is this that joined? Or no, Anne. Okay. Can you guys hear everything okay? Yeah. I can hear okay, you. Good. I can okay. hear Rebecca. Yeah. There. All right, so we'll just wait for everyone to join. 
everybody find the script okay? Yeah. What time is it? I think I have my clock covered. All right, we're right at 8.30. Mm -hmm. So you thought you were going to have to do two nines? Uh, so I had originally thought we would have enough people to do two nights, mm -hmm. and then I started casting it, and I was like, yeah, we don't. Like, yeah. No, not at all. we were missing missing a lot of guys. So I mean, it would have been yeah. <laughs> me asking a lot of the same people to go ahead and read again in different roles, which is you know a thing. But well, night one. We of, wrote... Yeah, no, yeah, I was gonna say night one of, of as you like, it's gonna be real lady heavy, and then night two, I'm like, cool, I got, I, I was able to recruit some male people in the in. <laughs> I love the facial hair. It looks really good. It's awesome. I don't have any stockings, though. Who the hell has yellow stockings? I think they exist in the world for this show. So no, I don't yeah. have any. <laughs> it is pretty obscure. And I think you're on mute. Uh, no, I think he's good. The iPad is on mute. Let me see. Yeah. And? Hang on, I need mute. There we go. Let me try. There we go. Hey. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, can you see me? We can. Oh, so this this is my veil. For ah, that is awesome. My idea. Great. Must be Beth and Sandra joined. Great. Hey, how are you? Oh, good. How are y'all? Good. Good. Good to see everybody. Mm hmm. And I learned how to auto record the meeting. So here's to that. I need to post the last one, actually. How, how do you get your script up on the screen? So really, you just have to slide your viewer over like if you're on a laptop, I just tend to put the um, the video portion off to the side and just try to make the script readable. Um, some versions uh, of the script are easier to do that with than others. Uh, Rebecca, the ones you've been using were really good about that, actually. Yeah. I'm, uh, um, I'm using two screens, so I'll just then I can do it. Oh, All right, we've got to show the people joining in. Mm -hmm. Here we are. <laughs> oh, Henry, hi. I love the facial hair, Rebecca. Oh, that's a good look. Appreciate it. Very good look. Thank you. Ooh, I love your background, Nicole. It goes so well with your outfit. There's two Again. Nicoles. I think you're Nicole, nice. Hey, hi, Jonathan. Jonathan, I hi. like it. I like it. I like the look. It's a Thanks, look. dude. I'm amazed <laughs> I haven't exhausted the looks yet on these Zoom things. The looks. I apparently have a lot of shit. I've used these glasses about three times. I think Dad and I are twinning with the glasses tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Jonathan, I had Jeff do this, just like he did every night for ANC. That was his pre-show ritual. For oh, right. ANC. Yeah. That's your <laughs> ANC. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. All right. Almost got everybody here. Waiting on a few others. <coughs> I know we'll need an orphano soon. Ty should be joining. Yeah. Right here. I don't know why I'm feeling good, Dano. I'm feeling great. How are you? I'm great. How know. was that chugging at Do You Wonders or what? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I was telling I was telling Rebecca and Nicole I accidentally half this bottle of rum. Uh, accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally on purpose. <laughs> yeah. I intentionally accidentally. <laughs> Whoops. 
Let me go in here. Okay. Just a couple more minutes. Yeah. Oh, I like that background, Melissa. It was so cool. Did somebody say Micah? Yes, I said hi. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> You look you? really cute, by the way. Good, how are you? Oh, house. you look so cute. And I love your background. Me? I didn't do much, but thank you. <laughs> I have bell sleeves that count. There you go. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> With the crochet. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> How's everybody's week? Pretty good. good, good. Oh, yeah, stay home. That. Yeah, I this can't believe the highlight of my week. week. I hung out yeah. really is the most exciting part of the week is doing these. <laughs> this is yeah. the only time I drink. This is great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I need to get my drink. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. Definitely. Well, me too, man. Time. Like, <laughs> can't neglect the drunk part of drunk Shakespeare. Uh, part of it is that, like, I, when, when, when this whole quarantining, self quarantining started, I was drinking a lot. And now I'm just kind of like, like okay. <laughs> I mean, not yeah. that fun to be hung over every morning anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was only like two days. <laughs> yeah. No. Like at the very beginning, over. you know, where you're just like, yeah. what else do I do? I'm dorky and I have electrolytes to take just in case so that way I don't get a hangover. Mm. There you go. That's <laughs> I got super hungover from drinking two glasses of wine last week. Yeah. I believe it. The wine I had the last time we did this, um, I brought in a water bottle, by the way, and um, <laughs> I, I started getting a headache like during our show. So, weren't you in your car? I was <laughs> in my car. Yeah, that's why I brought the water bottle, so that way it would not spill. <laughs> oh, amazing! It worked. The responsible hey, way to drink I and drive. Oh, Ty. Yes. Yes, Ty. Very nice. <laughs> I got to pull up the play. All right. So, Melissa, I was reading it, and Antonio is so totally in love with Sebastian, isn't he? Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, poor baby. <laughs> poor baby. I get to moon. Yeah. I'm sure. Hey, Jonathan, is CC uh, joining separately? Oh, I'm here. No, she's, she's here. Oh, she's there. You're in disguise. Oh my god. Oh yeah, you didn't recognize me. <laughs> I, was, oh, I changed back. I changed locations in my house. That's why. CC fool. Yeah. Awesome. You need to no, put your perfect. name of your character. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I just put <laughs> me in a description of me. So. <laughs> Awesome, everyone. Uh, do we feel like we're all here? Let's see. I feel like we're here. I dig the fro. Mine's not. I'm still on waiting. Looks like Tanya Terry's. Tanya's not here yet. Uh, she said she was going to be a few minutes late. Okay. Still shows you in the waiting room, Anne? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to sign in on my, I'm going to sign in on my computer instead of my iPad. Okay. Oh, here See you go. You I get, have it. Okay, I cool. Have it. There you go. Can y'all hear me okay? I got all small. Oh, there, that's better. All right, great. Uh, where is Curio? Is Curio? Curiouser, curiouser. Oh yeah, Tanya is going to be out. Let's see, who doesn't read for a while? Me. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. Okay, good. I'm having cool. to use the microphone on my iPad. Yeah, I'm actually finding two different places. It's ridiculous. Like sound works better on one and video works better on another. I'm just afraid my iPad's gonna run out of juice because it's it's going. 
All right. I'm so happy that I'm the fool because I actually know some of the songs from this. Like, I know the tunes. Oh, sorry. That's perfect. Yeah, that's oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm finally in. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, I don't see anybody else waiting, so I think we're good. Cool. All right, and then again, um, just if we can... Uh, if you know you're not reading for a while and you do see something where someone is not here, feel free to jump in. We're very casual here at Drunk Shakespeare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Part of being drunk, Shakespeare. <laughs> yes, except for the minors. We'll, we'll, yeah, uh, right. we'll except for CC. <laughs> I'm going to get some caffeine-free root beer. So not only will uh -oh. I not be energetic, I'll also be completely sober. Nice. Living on the earth. None of us can do anything about it anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what right are we over there. Yeah. I'm going to lecture you six feet away. Oh, that's true, yeah. That's funny. But don't, really. I'll All try. right, shall we begin? Yes. yes. If music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that serviting the appetite might sicken and so die. <laughs> Strain again. It had a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er oh, my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough, no more. Tis not so sweet now as it was before. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou that notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as the sea not enters there of what validity and pitch so air, but falls into abatement at low price, even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. <laughs> Will you go hunt my lord? What, Kyria? The heart. <laughs> Why, so I do. The noblest that I have. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first. Sorry, guys. Methought she was purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires, like fell and cruel hounds, ere since pursue me. Hmm. How now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from the handmaid do return this answer. The elements itself Till seven years he shall not behold the face at ample view, but like a cloistress, she will veiled walk in water once a day, her chamber round with eye offending grind. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in a sad remembrance. Oh, she that had a hearth of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother. How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her? When liver, brain, and heart, their sovereign, sovereign thrones, all, all supplied, and filled her sweet perfections with one self king. Away before me to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. What country, friends, is this? Oh, this is Illyria, lady. What should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you, sailors? It is perchance that you yourself were saved. My, my poor brother. And perchance may he be. True, madam. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself, after our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother, most provident in peril, bind himself, courage and hope both teaching him the practice, to a strong mast that lived upon the sea, where, like Arian on the dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. For saying so there's cold. Mine own escape unfolded to my hope, where to my thy speech serves for throwing the heart of him. Knowst thou this country? Ay, madam. Well, for I was bred and born not three hours' travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke in nature as in name. What's his name? Orsino. 
Orsino. I've heard my father name him. He, he was a bachelor then? And so is now, or was so very late. For but a month ago I went from hence, and then twas fresh in murmur, as you know, what great ones do the less will prattle of, that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What she? The virtuous maid, the daughter of a count that died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died, for whose dear love, they say, she hath abjured the sight and company of men. That I serve that lady. I might not be delivered to the world till I had made mine own occasion mellow what my state is. There is a fair behavior in the captain, and though that nature with a beauteous wall doth oft close in pollution, yet of thee I will believe thou hast a mind that suits th with this thy fair and outward character. I pray thee, and I'll pay thee bounteously, conceal me what I am, and, and be my aid, for as is happily shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as, as a unit. For I can sing and speak to him in, in many sorts of music that will allow me is very worth his service. But else may hap, to time I will commit, only shape thou thy servants to me. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, let mine eyes not see. I think thee. Lead me on. What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I am sure cares an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier, O knights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. Why, let her accept before accepted. Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and so be these boots too. And they be not. Let them hang themselves in their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday, and of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Who? Sir Andrew Aguchi? I, he. He is as tall a man as any's in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? Why, he has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Fine that you'll say so. He plays a vile de gamois and speaks three or four languages word for word without book and have all the good gifts of nature. He hath indeed, almost natural. Besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler, and but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gust he hath in quarreling, tis thought among the prudent he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hand, they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking healths to my niece, I'll drink to her as long as there is a passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. He's a coward and a coistrel that will not drink to my niece till his brains turn on the toe like a parish top. What wench! Castiliano Sulgo, for the air comes, Sir Andrew Agnuface. Sir Toby Belch! Oh, how now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet Sir Andrew. Bless you, Fair Shrew. <laughs> and you too, sir. Accost, Sir Andrew. Accost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Oh, good mistress, Acost, I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Oh, good mistress Mary, Acost. You mistake 
night. Accost is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. <laughs> uh, by my troth, I, <laughs> I would not woo her in that company. <laughs> is that the meaning of accost? <laughs> Fare you well, gentlemen. Oh. Thou that part so, Sir Andrew, would thou mightst never draw sword again. And you part so, mistress, I would, I might not never draw sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have, and here's my hand. Now, sir, thought is free. I pray you, bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Oh, uh, wherefore, sweetheart, uh, what's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Why, I think so. I'm not such an ass that I can keep my hand dry. But, uh, what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? Aye, sir. I have them at my fingers' ends. Mary, now I let go your hand. I am barren. <laughs> oh, night, thou lackest a cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think. Oh, unless you see canary put me down. Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian mm. or an ordinary man has. But I'm a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No question. If I thought that, I'd forswear it. I'll ride to home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or not do? Oh, I would I had bestowed the time and the tongues that I have in fencing, dancing, and bear baiting. Oh, but I had followed the arts. Then hadst thou had an excellent head of hair. Oh, why? Would that have mended my hair? Past question, for thou seest it will not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent. It hangs like flax on a distaff. And I hope to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spin it off. <laughs> Faith, our home tonight, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen, or if she will be, it's four to one shall not of me. The count here hard by woos her. She'll none of the count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I have heard her swear it. Tut! There's life in it, man. I'll stay a month longer. I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. Like, I delight in masks and revels, sometimes altogether. Art thou good at these kick shawses this night and many a man in illyria whoever so she be under the degree of my betters and i will not compare with an old man what is thy excellence in a gallier knight faith i can cut a caper and i can cut the mutton to it and i think i have the back trick simply as strong as any man in illyria Wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore have these gifts a curtain before them? Are they like to take dust like Mistress Moll's picture? Why not thou not? Why dost thou not go to church in a galliard and come home in a coranto? My very walk should be a jig. I would not so much as make water, but in, in a sink a, a pace. What dost thou mean? Is it a world to hide virtues in? I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg, it was formed under the star of a gallier. Aye, tis strong, and, uh, and does such a different well in a dun-colored stock. Shall we set about some revels? <laughs> what shall we do else? Were we not born under Taurus? 
Taurus, that's sides and legs. No, sir, it is legs and yeah. thighs. Let I me see high. the caper. Ha! Higher! Ha! 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 Oh. If the Duke continue these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. Be the fear is humor or my negligence that you call in question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favors? No. Believe me. Thank you. Ah, here comes the Count. Cesario, ho. Huh? In your attendance, my lord, here. Staniel Wallaloof. Cesario, no, no, no less but all, I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Stand at her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she'll never admit me. Be clamorous and leave all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. See, I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with the discourse of my your faith. It shall become thee well to act my woe. will attend it better in thy youth than in annuncios of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Good lad, believe it. For this shall yet belie thy happy years. Thou say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth than rubious. Thy small pipe is a <coughs> organ, shrill and sound, and all is similar to the woman's part. I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Some four or five attend him, all, if you will, for I myself am best when least in company. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. In a powerful strife where I rue, myself would be his wife. Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in a way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world needs fear no colors. <laughs> Make you. that good. He shall see none to fear. A good Lenten answer. I can tell thee where that saying was born of, I fear no colors. Where, good Mistress Mary? In the wars, and at that, and that that may be bold to say in your foolery. Well, God give them wisdom that have it, and those that are fools, let them use their talents. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or to be turned away is not that as good as hanging to you. Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. And for turning away, let summer hear it out. You are resolute, then. Not so, neither, but I am resolved on two points. That if one break, the other will hold, or if both break, your gaskins fall. Apt in good faith, very apt. Well, go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. Peace, you rogue. No more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely, you were best. Wit, and, and it be thy will, put me into good fooling. Those wits that think they have thee do very oft prove fools, and that I am sure, wait, and, that I'm, and, that, and I that am sure I lack thee may pass for a wise man. For what says Quinopolis? Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. God bless thee, lady. No, take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellows? Take away the lady. Oh, go to. You're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. Forgive the dry fool drink, then is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. If he cannot, let the botcher mend him. Anything that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin. And sin that amends is but patched with virtue. If that this simple syllogism will serve, so if it will not, what remedy? As there is no true cuckold but calamity, so beauty's a flower. That lady bade take away the fool, therefore I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. 
Miss Prison in the highest degree. Lady Cucules non facit monacum. That's as much to say as, were I not motley in my brain, good Madonna, give me, a, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterity, good Madonna. Oh. Make your proof. I must catechize you for it, Ma Madonna. Good my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. <laughs> what think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity, for the better increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not pass his word for two pence that you are no fool. How say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. L look you now. He's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. I protest I'd take these wise men that crow so that these, so that these set kind of fools no better than the fool's zanies. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and free of disposition is to take those things for bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. Now, Mercury, endure thee, endue thee with leasing, for thou speakest well of fools. <laughs> Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Tis a fair young man and well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Oh, fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madmen. Fly on him. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home or what you will to dismiss it. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people grow tired and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool who scold Jove, cram with brains, for here he comes, one of thy kin has a most weak Pia Mater. By mine honor, half drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman. What gentleman? Tis a gentleman here, a plague of these pickle herring. How now, sot? Good Sir Toby. Oh, cousin, cousin, how come you, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Leshery? I defy leshery. There's one at the gate. Ay, Mary, what is he? Let him be the devil, and he will. I cannot. Give me faith, say I. But it's all one. What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught above heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, and the third drowns him. Oh, go thou, go thou and seek the crowner, and let him sit on my cuz, for he's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes it on him to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak to you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that, too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He is fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. I've been told so, and, and he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and the supporter to the bench, but he will speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. What manner of man? Oh, very ill manner. He'll speak with you whether you will or no. Of what person in, personage and age is he? Not, 
yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy, as a squash is tis before tis peace cod or a codling when tis almost an apple. Tis with him in standing water between boy and man. He's very well favored and speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Uh, gentlewoman. My lady calls. Here's my veil. I'll throw it over my face. We'll once more hear Orsinio's embassy. The honorable lady of the house, which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will? Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. I, I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comfortable, even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentle one, give me modest assur assurance if you be the lady of the house that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound art. And yet, by the very things of malice, I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Oh, certain. If you are she, you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is for my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it. And it is poetical. It is the more like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather than to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of the moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber, I'm whole here a little longer. Some mollification for your giant, sweet, lately, sweet lady? Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Sure you have some hideous matter to deliver when the, when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are full of peace as matter. <laughs> Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I word are as secret as maidenhead to your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Huh. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much be, may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bo bosom. <laughs> In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by thy method, in the first of his heart. <laughs> oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one as I was this present. Is not well done? Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir. Twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruel she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, oh sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried and every particular and utensil labeled to my will, as in item, two lips in different red, item, two green eyes with lids to them, item, one, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are. You are too proud. 
but if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be recompensed, though you were crowned the non-perial of beauty. How does he love me? Uh, with, with adorations, uh, fertile tears, with groans that, that thunder love with sighs of fire. Your lord does not know my mind. I, I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in dimension and in the shape of nature, a gracious person. But yet, I cannot love him. He might have had his answer long ago. If I did love you and my master's flame with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of condemned love and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Hallow your name to the reverberate hills and, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out or... Olivia! <laughs> Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. He might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him sin no more. Unless, per chance, you might come to me again uh, to, to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I, I, I thank you for your kind, for your pains. Spend this for me. Oh, I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love makes his heart a flint that you shall love, and let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortune, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Thou be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, action, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. Not so fast, soft, soft, unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left his ring behind him. Would I or not? Tell him I'll have none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him the reasons for it. Hi thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. I do not know what. I fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and this be so. Will you stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My star shine dar darkly over me. The lignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore, I shall crave of you your leave that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let, let me yet know of you whither you are bound. No, sooth, sir. My determinate voyage is more extravagancy. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, charges me in manners that rather to express myself. You must know of me, then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, which I called Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left me behind in him myself and his sister, bo both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would he had been so ended. But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea, my sister was drowned. Alas, the day. A lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accountable beautiful, many accounted beautiful. But though I could not with such 
estimable wonder over far, over far believe that. Yes, thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him who have been who have who you have recovered, desire is not. Fare you well at once. My bosom is full of kindness, and I am yet so near the manners of my mother that upon the least occasion more mine eyes will tell tales of me. I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else would I very shortly see thee he see thee there. But come what may, I do adore thee so that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Were you not even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, if I have since but arrived but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord in a desperate assurance. She will none of him. And one thing more, that you never so hardy to come again in his affairs unless it be to report on your, how your lord takes this. Receive it so. He took the ring of me, I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it at her, and her will is that it should be returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not harmed her. She made good view of me, indeed, so much that he thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak and start distractedly. <laughs> she loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring, why he sent her none. <laughs> I am the man. <laughs> if it be so, as tis... Oh, poor lady, she were better love a dream. Disguise, I see, thou art a wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy doth much. How easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their form? Alas, our frailty is not the cause, not we, for such as we are made of, such we be. How this phage! My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she mistaken seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day, what thriftless sights shall poor Olivia breathe? O time, thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard and not for me to untie. Approach, Sir Andrew, not to be abed after midnight is to be up betimes, and surgery, thou knowest. Nay, by my troth, I know not. But all I know to be up late is to be up late. A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early. So that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Does not our lives consist of the four elements? Nay, so they say. But all I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. <laughs> Thou art a scholar. Let us, therefore, eat and drink. Marion, I say, a stoop of wine. Oh, here comes the fool in face. Oh, now my heart. Did you never see the picture of we three? <laughs> oh, ass. Now let's have a catch. By my troth, the fool has an excellent breast. I'd rather than, no, it's gross, it's my daughter. I'd rather than 40 <laughs> shillings I had such a leg and so sweet a breath to sing as the fool has. In sooth, thou wast in very gracious fooling last night when thou spokest of, 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 pick a 
Yeah. Yeah. Of, us, of the vapian passing of the equiconautical of Quinubius. Uh, uh, tw uh, Twas very good in faith. I sent thee six pence for thy leman, hast it? I did impeticus thy gratility, for <laughs> Avolio's nose is no whipstock. My lady has a white hand, and the myrmidons are no bottle ale houses. Excellent! <laughs> Why, well, this is the best fooling when all is done. Now a song. Come on, there is sixpence for you. Let's have a song. There's a testerel of me, too. If one night... Give Would you have a love song or a song of good life? A love song! A love song! I, I, I care not for good life. <laughs> oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming that can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting. Journeys end in lovers meeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Excellent. Thank you, thank you. Good thank in you. faith. Good, good. Encore. What is love? Tis not hereafter. Present mirth hath present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In delay there lies no plenty. Then come kiss. Me sweet and twit this fell apart. You so stuff will not endure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It sure won't. A most <laughs> voice as I am true knight. A contagious breath. Very sweet and contagious in faith. To hear by the nose, it is dulcet in contagion. But shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse the night owl in a catch that will draw three souls out of one weaver? Shall yeah. we do that? And you love me, let's do it! Hey. I'll get a catch. <laughs> By our lady, sir, and some dogs will catch well. Oh, most certain. Let our catch be thou, knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave, knight. I shall be constrained in to call thee knave, knight. Tis not the first time I have constrained one to call me knave. It begins, full, it begins hold thy peace. Well, I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, good in faith, come begin. Oh. A caterwauling do you oh, keep oh, here? Oh, oh, if my lady oh, have not called oh, up her steward Malvolio oh, and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady is a catayan. We are politicians. Malvolio's a pegaramsey and free merry men in a we. Am I not consanguine? Am I not of her blood? Tilly Valley, lady. There dwells a man in Babylon. Lady, lady. Beshrew me, the night's an admirable fooling. Oh, I, he does well enough if he disposed, and so do I, too. He does it with a better grace, but I do it more natural. Of the twelfth day of December. master, are you mad? Or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, nor honesty? But to gabble like tinkers at this time of night, do you make an alehouse of my lady's house that you squeak on your cozy ears catches without any indignation of remorse or voice. Is there no respect of person or place nor time in you? We did keep time, sir, in our catches. Uh -huh. Snack up. Oh my God, Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My <gasps> lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as her kinsman, she owe nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house, if not, and it would please you to take leave of her. She is willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, my dear. Heart, since I must needs be gone. Hey, good Sir Toby. His eyes do show, his days are almost done. That I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much credit to you. Shall I bid him go? What and if you do? 
Oh, oh no, no, no. You better don't. Attitude, sir, you lie. Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, these shall be no more cakes and ale? Yes, my Saint Anne and ginger shall be hot in the mouth, too. Thou art right. Go, sir. Rub your chain with crumbs. A soup of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Go shake your ears. Oh, Twere as good a deed to drink when a man's a hungry to challenge him in the field and then break promise with him and, and, and make a fool of him. <laughs> Do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge or I'll deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the Counts was today with my lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not gull him into a name word and make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us! Possess us, tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he is a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. What, for being a Puritan? Thy exquisite reason, dear knight. I have no exquisite reason for it, but I have reason good enough. The devil, a Puritan that he is, or anything constantly but a time pleaser, an affectioned ass that cons state without book and utters it by great swaths. The best persuaded of himself, so crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all that look on him love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, wherein by the color of his beard, the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expressure of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady or niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction of our hands. <laughs> Excellent. I smell a device. Oh, I have it in my nose, too. He shall think by the letters that thou wilt drop that they come from my niece and that she's in love with him. <laughs> my purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse now would make him an ass. Uh. Ass, I doubt not. Oh, twill be admirable. Sport Royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him. I will plan to you too and let the fool make a third where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. For this night to bed and dream on the event. Farewell. Good night, Penthesilia. Before me, she's a good wench. She's a beagle. True bread, and one that adores me. What a that! I was adored once too. <laughs> Let's to bed, knight. Thou hadst need send for more money. Oh, if I can't recover your niece, I am a foul way out. Send for money, knight. If thou hast her not in the end, call me. Cut. If I do not, never trust me. Take it how you will. Come, come. I'll go burn some sack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come, night. Come, night. Give me some music. Ah. Now, good morrow, friend. Now, good Cesario. But that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night, Methought it did relieve my passion much more than light airs and recollected terms of these most brick and giddy pace at times. 
come but one verse. He is not here, so please, your lordship, that should sing it. Who was it? Fester the jester, my lord, a fool that the Lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Seek him out and play the tune the while. Come hither, boy, if ever thou shalt love, and the sweet pangs of it remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? Gives a very echo to the seed where love is thrown. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young thou thou art. Thine eyes have stayed upon some favor that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. Hmm. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. <laughs> she is not worth thee, then. What years, in faith? About your years, my lord. Too old, by heaven. <laughs> Still, the woman taken elder than herself. So where's she to him? She so, so sways she level in her husband's heart. For <laughs> boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affliction, affliction cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so they are. Alas, that they are so to die, even when they to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, come. The song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario. It is old and plain. The spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bones do use to chant it. It is silly sooth. And dallies <laughs> with the innocence of love like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Aye, prithee, sing. Come away, come away, death. And in sad cypress, let me be laid. Fly away, fly away, fly away, breath. I am slain by a fair, cruel maid. My shroud of white stuck all with you. Oh, prepare it. My part of death, not one so true, did share it. Not a flower, not a flower, not a flower sweet. On my black coffin, let there be strown. Not a friend, not a friend, not a friend, gree. My poor corpse where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand, thousand, thousand sighs to save. Lay me, oh, where sad true lover never find my grave to weep there. Do -do -do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's for thy pains. Oh, no pains, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. <laughs> I'll pay thy pleasure then. Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. <sighs> Give me now, Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy god protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta, for thy mind is a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to sea, that their business might be everything, and their intent everywhere. For that's it, that makes a good voyage of nothing. Farewell. <laughs> Let all the rest give place. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Once more, Cesaria. Get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. But the parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her, tell her I hold as giddily as fortune. Tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her, you tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion of love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. They lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite, no motion of the liver but the palate, the set suffer suffet, cloyment and revolt. 
but mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love woman a, a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know that you should... What dost thou know? Too well what love woman to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My, my father had a daughter, loved a man as it might be, perhaps were I a woman and I should be your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment like a worm in the bud feed on her damask cheeks. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was this not love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will. For still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house. And all the brothers, too. And yet I know not. So she shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the thing. To her in haste. <clears throat> give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place. Buy no denay. Come thy ways, Senor Fabian. Nay, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to have the niggardly, rascally sheep biter come by some notable shame? I would exult, man. You know, he brought me out of favor with my lady about a beer baiting here. To anger him, we'll have the bear again, and we yeah. will. Fool him black and blue, shall we not, Sir Andrew? If we do not, it is pity of our lives. Sorry, Ty distracted him. Here comes the little villain. How now, my metal of India? Get you all three into the box tree. Malvolio's coming down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun, practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. Observe him for the love of mockery, for I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close, in the name of jesting. Lie thou there, for here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. But... <laughs> <laughs> Tis but fortune, for all is fortune. Maria did once say she affected me, and I've heard herself come this near, that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a most exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? Here's an overweening rogue. Oh, peace. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of them. Now how he jets under his advanced plumes. Lloyd, I could so beat the rogue. He's, I say. The Count Malvolio. Ah, rogue. Pistol it, pistol it. Peace, peace. There is example for it. The Lady of the Starchy married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Oh, fire on him, Jezebel. Oh, peace. Now he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. Oh, for a stone bow to hit him in the eye! Calling my officers around me in my blanched velvet gown, having come from daybed where I've left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone! Oh, peace. Peace. And then to have the, the humor of the state. And after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place, as I sh would they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsman Toby. Bolts and shackles! Oh, peace, peace, peace. Now, now. Seven of my people with obedient art make out for him. I frown the while and perchance wind up my watch or play 
some with some rich jewel. Toby Toby approaches, curtsies to me. Shall this fellow live? Though our silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. I extend my hand to him, thus quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. And does not Toby take you a blow of the lips then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me from your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. Wait, what? You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scalp! Nay, patience, we break the sinews of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with the foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. Or Sir Andrew. I knew it was I, for many do call me fool. Oh, what employment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the gin. Oh, peace and the spirit of humor's intimate reading aloud to him. By my life. This is my lady's hand. These are her very C's, her U's and her T's, and thus she makes great P's. It is in contemplation of question her hand. Her C's, her U's, and her T's. Why that? So to, to the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes, her very phrases, by your leave wax soft, and the impressure, an impressure Lucrece, with which she often uses to seal it is my lady. Whom should this be? This wins them, liver and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. Okay. Uh, no man must know what, what follows. The number is altered. No man must know if this should be <sighs> the <laughs> Malvolio. <laughs> Mary, hang thee, Brock! I may command when I adore, but silence like Lucretia's knife. With bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Dusty and riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, but, but first let me see. Oh, God. Let's see, let me see! <laughs> what dish of poison has she dressed him? And what with what wing the staniel checks at it? Okay, I may command where I adore. Why she may command me, because I serve her, she is my lady. Why, this is evident in any formal capacity, there is no obstruction to this. In the end, what should that alphabetical position pre pretend? If I can make that resemble something in me, softly, M. O A I. Oh, I make up that he is now at a cold scent. Shadow will trip upon us all. Will cry upon us all for this, <gasps> though he be as rank as a fox. M. <gasps> Malvolio. M. Why that begins my name? Did not I say he would work it out? The cur is excellent at faults. M. But then there is no constancy in the sequel that suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does. And O shall land, I hope. Aye, or I'll cudgel him and make him cry, O. And then I comes behind. Aye, and you had any eye behind you, you might see more distraction at your heels than fortunes before you. Okay. M A M O A I. The simulation is not as the former, and yet to crush this a little, it would bow to me, for every one of these letters are in my name. Soft, here follows prose. Oh, okay. If this fall take into thy hand, revolve. In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness. Oh thrust upon them, thy fates upon their hands. Let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to endure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slow and appear fresh. Be opposite with the kinsmen, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy Yalu, 
stockings and wish to see thee ever oh, cross guarded. I say, remember, go to, thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, still the fellow of servants and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell. She that would alter services with thee, a fortunate and happy. <sighs> Daylight and champion discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will politic of authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will point devise the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade on me for every reason it excites to this that my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross guarded and in this she manifests herself to my love and with the kind of injunction drives me to this habit of her liking. I thank my stars. I am happy. I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings and cross guarded, even with the swiftness of putting them on. Jove and stars be praised. Yet here's the postscript. Uh, thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertains my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Oh, thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile, dear sweet, I pray thee. Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything thou wilt of me. I will not give my part of this sport for a pension of thousands to be paid from the Sophie. I could marry this wench for this device. So could I too. And ask no other dowry with her but such another jest. Nor I neither. There comes my noble gull catcher. Wilt thou set thy foot on my neck? Or on mine either. <laughs> Shall I play my freedom and trade trip and become thy bond slave? In faith or I either. Why, thou hast put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. Nay, but say true, does it work upon him? Like aqua vitae with a midwife. If you will then see the fruits of the sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis a color she abhors, and cross guarded a fashion she detests and he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt. If you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent devil of wit. I'll make one too. Save thee, friend, in thy music. Does thou live by thy tabor? No, sir, I live by the church. Yeah, art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house does, does stand by the church. <laughs> so thou mayst say the king lies by a beggar if a beggar dwell near him, or the church stand by the tabor if the tabor stand by the church. You have said, sir. Ah, oh, to see this age, a sentence is but a chevril glove to a good wit how quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Mm, yeah, that's certain. They that dally nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. I would, therefore, my sister had had no name, sir. My man. Why, sir, her name's a word, and to dally with that word might make my sister wanton. But indeed, <laughs> words are very rascals since bonds disgrace them. The reason, man. Troth, sir, I can yield you none without words, and... Words are grown so false, I am loath to prove the reason with them. I warrant thou art a merry fellow and carest for nothing. Not so, sir, I do care for something, but in my conscience, conscience, sir, I do not care for you. If that be to care for nothing, <laughs> sir, uh, I would it would make you invisible. Art not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? No, indeed, sir, the Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. And fools are as like husbands as pilchers are to herrings. The husbands, the bigger. <laughs> I'm indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. I saw thee laid at the countersinos. Foolery, sir, does walk about the orb like the sun. 
It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, but the fool should be as oft with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, and thou pass upon me. I'll know more with thee. Hold, here's expenses for thee. Now Jove in his next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. Oh, by my troth, I'll tell thee I'm almost sick for one. Well, I will not have it grow on my chin. Is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these have bread, sir? Yes, but kept being kept together and put to use? I would play Lord Pandurus of Phrygia, sir, to bring a Cressida to this Troilus. Shakespeare. <laughs> I understand you, sir. Tis well begged. The matter, I hope, is not great, sir. Begging but a beggar. Cressida was a beggar. My lady is within, sir. I will conster them. I will conster to them whence you come. Who you are and what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. This fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of wit. He must observe their mood on whom he jests, the quality of persons, and the time. And like the haggard, check at every feather that comes before his eye. This is a practice, as full of labor as a wise man's art, for folly that he wisely shows is fit. But wise men, folly falling, quite taint their wit. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir? Do you vougard, monsieur? Et voici votre servidure. I hope, sir, you are, and I am yours. Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean, she is, the, she's the list of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir, put them to motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I will answer you with gate and entrance, but we are prevented. Most excellent accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. Oh, that youth's a rare courtier. Rain odors, well. My matter of <laughs> no voice, lady, but to your own most pregnant vouchsafed ear. Odors pregnant and vouchsafed. I'll get them all three ready. Yes, ma'am. I think she's <laughs> muted. Yeah, she said her her thing's not her thing's not working right now. Oh. Okay, but now I can't find what. Where where are we? I've lost. I've lost. At the top of ninety seven. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Somebody read me while I try to find it. It's Act 3, Scene 1, just FYI. Let the garden door be shut and lead me to my hearing. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir, twas never merry world since lowly, lowly feigning was called compliment. Your servant to the Count Orsino youth. And he is yours, and his must means be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him I think not on him. For his thoughts would they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wait your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you. I bade you never speak again of him. For would you undertake another suit, I had rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear lady, I- Give me leave, beseech you. I did send, after the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me, you. Under your hard construction must I sit, to force that on you in a shameful cunning which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Had you not set mine honor at the stake and baited it with all the muzzled thoughts that tyrannous heart can think? To one of your receiving enough is shown. A cypress, not a bosom, hides my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, <laughs> not a grice, for it is a bit vulgar proof that very often we pity enemies. 
Why then methinks tis time to smile again? O oh, world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If one should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. The clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. And yet when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way, due west. Then westward ho! Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You'll nothing, madam, to my lord by me? Stay. I prithee, tell me what, you thou, what thou thinkst of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right. I am not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. A murderous guilt shows not in self more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that <laughs> maugre all thy pride, nor wit nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. By, by innocence I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so would you, good madam. Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayest move that heart which now abhors to like his love. I'm mute, Dad. I'm trying. Call faith, I'll stay not a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. Must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favors to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard! Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that! As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love and her toward you. Slight, will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of judgment and reason. And they have been grand jurymen since before Noah was a sailor. She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exasperate you, to wake your dormouse valor, put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should then have accosted her with some excellent chest, fire new from the mint. You should have banged the youth in the dumbness. This was looked for at your hand and this was bought. The double guilt of this opportunity you let time wash off and you're now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt either of valor or policy. Can it be any way? It must be with valor. For policy I hate, I'd as lief be a brownist as a politician. Why then, build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places. My niece shall take note of it, and assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Uh, will uh, either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go. Write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty. So it be eloquent and full of invention, taught him with the license of ink. If thou vowest him some thrice, it shall not be amiss, and as many lies as will lie in thy sheet of paper, although the sheet were big enough for the bed of where in England. Set him down, go about it. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen, no matter about it. Where shall I find you? We'll call thee at the 
big culo. Go. What? This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been dear to him, lad. Some 2,000 strong or so. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it? Never trust me, then. And by all means, stir on the youth to an answer. I think oxen and wain ropes cannot hail them together. For Andrew, if he were opened and you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. In this opposite, the youth bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty. Look where the youngest wren of mine comes. If you desire the spleen and will laugh yourselves into stitches, follow me. Yond Gol Malvolio is turned heathen, a very renegado. For there is no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly can ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. He's in yellow stockings. And cross guarded. Most villainously, like a pedant that keeps a school at the church. I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter that I drop to betray him. He does smile his face into more lines than is in the new map with the augmentation of the Indies. You have not seen such a thing as tis. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him. If she do, he'll smile and take it for a great favor. Oh, bring us, bring us where he is. Oh, not by my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasures of your pains, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than violet steel, did spur me forth. And not all love to see you, though so much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage. But jealousy, that what might befall your travel, being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often prove rough and unhospitable. My willing love, the rather by these arguments of fear, set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks, and thanks and ever thanks, and off good turns are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay. But were my worth as in my conscience firm, you should find better dealing. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodging. Not, I'm not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame that do renown this city. Would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the Countess galleys, I did some service. Of such note, indeed, that were I taken, taken here, it would scarce be answered. Be like you slew a great number of his people. The offense is not of such a bloody nature, albeit the quality of the time and quarrel might well have given us bloody argument. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which for traffic's sake most of our city did. Only myself stood out, for which, if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Do not, then, walk to open. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir, here's my purse. In the south suburbs at the Elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of the town. There shall you have me. Why I your purse? Haply your eyes shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase, and your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the Elephant. I do remember. I have sent after him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is brought, bought more oft than begged or borrowed. Oh, I speak too loud. Where's Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? Uh-oh, I think Micah froze. 
No. Unmute. Micah, unmute. Okay, so he's coming, madam, but in very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he bathe? No, madam, mm -hmm. he does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if he come, for sure the man is tainted in his wits. Go call him hither. Oh, I am as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. How now, Malvolio? Sweet lady. Ho, ho. <laughs> Smilest thou? I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady. Uh, oh, I, I couldn't be sad. Uh, this does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering, but you know, what of that? If it please, the eye of one, it is with me, as the very true son it is, please one and please all. Why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Uh, sorry. Um, not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. It did come to his hands and commands shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. <laughs> Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? Oh, to bed, I sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. Oh, God comfort thee. Why dost thou smile so and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? At your request, yes, night, Nightingale, answer dawns. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. Twas well writ. What meanst thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great. Huh? And achieve greatness. What says thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Oh, heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings? Thy yellow stockings? And wished to see thee cross guarded. Cross guarded? Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me be thee servant to still. Why, why this is a very midsummer madness. <laughs> oh, servant? Mm. Oh, oh, madam. <laughs> The young gentleman of the Count Orsino's return. I can hardly entreat him back. He attends to your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Maria, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for half my dowry. Oh, do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look at me. This, con this con sir, uh, concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me in that letter. Cast thy humble slow, she says. Um, uh, says she, be opposite with the kinsmen's, surly with thy servants, let thy tongue tang with argument state, put thyself into the trick of singularity and consequently set down the manner how as, how, <clears throat> as, a sad face, a reverend carriage, a slow tongue, in the habit of some sir of note, and so forth. I have limited her, but it is Jove's doing, and Jove make me thankful. And when she went away, let this fellow be looked to. Ah, oh, fellow, not Malvolio, nor after my degree, not fellow. Why everything out here is together, that no dram of scruple, no scruple of scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous, run safe circumstance, what can be said? Nothing that can be, that nothing get, that can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Jove, not I is the doer of this, and he is thanked. Which way is he in the name of sanctity? If all the devils of hell be drawn in little, and Legion himself possessed him, yet I'll speak to him. Here he is, here he is. How's, how is it with you, sir? How is it with you, man? Oh, I discard you. Let me enjoy my private go off. Lo, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Did not I tell you? Sir Toby, my lady, prays you to have a care of him. <laughs> Does she so? Go to, go to, peace, peace. 
we must deal gently with him. Let me alone. How do you, Malvolio? How is it with you? What, man? Defy the devil? <laughs> Consider he's an enemy to mankind. You know what you say? La, you! And you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it at heart. Pray God he not be bewitched. Mary is water to the wise woman. Mary, and it shall be done tomorrow morning. Mary, and it shall be done tomorrow morning if I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. For now, mistress. Oh, Lord! Pray hold thy peace. This is not the way. Do you not see you move him? Let me alone with him. No way but gentleness. Gently, gently. The field is rough and will not be roughly used. Why, how now, my bark honk? Well, how dost thou, Chuck? Huh? I, Biddy, come with me. What, man, tis not for gravity to play at cherry pit with Satan? Hang him, foul collier. Get him to say his prayers, good Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, Minx. No, I warrant you, he will not hear of godliness. Go hang yourselves all, you idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know hereafter. Is it possible? If this were played upon a stage now, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. His very genius hath taken the infection of the device, man. Nay, pursue him now, lest the device take air and taint. Why, we shall make him mad indeed. The house will be the quieter. Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. <laughs> My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance till our very pastime, tired out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on him, at which time we will bring the device to the bar and crown thee for a finder of madmen. <laughs> but see, but see. More matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. I warrant you there's vinegar and pepper in it. Is it so saucy? Aye, it is. I warrant him. Do but read. Give me. He reads. <laughs> Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee reason for it. A good note that keeps from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in thy sight she uses thee kindly. But thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief. And to speak in good sense, less. I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me. Good. Thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Still you keep at the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better. And so look to thyself, thy friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy. <laughs> if this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it him. You may have very fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady and will by and by depart. Go, oh, Sir Andrew. Scout, for, scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bombaily. So soon as ever thou seest him draw, and as thou drawst, 
swear horrible, for it comes to pass off that a terrible oath, with a swaggering accent sharply twanged off, gives manhood more approbation than ever proof itself would have earned him away. Nay, let me alone for swearing. Now will not I deliver his letter, for the behavior of the young gentleman gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and my niece confirms no less. Therefore, this letter, being so excellently ignorant, will breed no terror in the youth. He will find it comes from a clodpole. But, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon Ague Cheek a notable report of valor, and drive the gentleman, as I know his youth will aptly receive it, into a most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. This will so fright them both that they will kill one another by the look like cockatrices. <laughs> Here he comes with your niece. Give them way till you take leave and presently after him. I will mediate the while upon some horrid message for a challenge. I have said too much into a heart of stone and made my honor too unchariot. There's something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong potent fault is it that but mocks reproof. <laughs> the same behavior that your passion bears goes on my master's griefs. Here, wear this jewel for me. It is my picture. Refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you come again tomorrow. For what shall you ask of me that I'll deny? That honor saved may upon asking give. Nothing but this, your true love for my master? How with mine honor may I give him that which I have given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir. That defense thou hast, but take thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him? I know not, but thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard end. Dismount thy tuck. Be yer in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake, sir. I am sure no man hath any quarrel to me. My remembrance is very free and clear from any image of offense done to any man. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, but take you to your God, for your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man withal. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is night, dubbed with unhatched rapier, and on carpet consideration, but he is a devil in private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three, and his incensement at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. Hobnob is his word. Give it or take it. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I, I'm, I'm no fighter. I have, I've heard of some kind of men that put quarrels purposely on others to taste their valor. Like this is a man of that quirk. Sir, no. His indignation derives itself out of a very competent injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. Back you shall not to the house, unless you undertake that with me, which with as much safety you might answer him. Therefore, on, or strip your sword stark naked, for metal you must, that's certain, or forswear to wear iron about you. 
this is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the knight what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Senor Fabian, stay you by this gentleman till my return. Pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you even till mortal ar arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. I beseech you, what matter of man is he? Nothing of that wonderful promise to read him by his form, as you are like to find him in the proof of his valor. He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite that you could possibly have found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I'll make your peace with him if I can. I shall be most bound to you for it. I am one that rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I, I, I care not who knows so much of my mettle. Why, man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such a Ferrario. I had a pass with him, rapier, scabbard, and all. And he gives me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that it, it is inevitable. And on the answer, he pays you as surely as your feet hits the ground they step on. They say he has been fencer to the Sophie. Walks on and I'll not meddle with him. Aye, but he will not now. He be pacified. Uh, uh, Baby, it can scarce hold him yonder. Oh, plague on it. If I thought he had been valiant and so cunning and fence, I'd have seen him damned ere I had challenged him. Let the matter slip, and uh, I'll give him my horse, great captain. Mm. I'll make the motion. Stand here, make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. <laughs> Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. <laughs> I have his horse to take up the quarrel. I have persuaded him the youth's a devil. He is as horribly conceited of him. Hans looks as pale as if a bear were at his heels. There's no remedy, sir. He will fight with you for Zoth's sake. Mary. He hath better bethought him of his quarrel, and he finds that now scarce to be worth talking of. Therefore, draw for the supportance of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you see him furious. Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you. He cannot, by the duello, avoid it. But he has promised me, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on, to it. Uh, pray God he keep his oath. I do assure you tis against my will. <clears throat> Will be Put up your right? sword. If this young gentleman have done offense, I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. You, sir? Why, what are you? One, sir, that for his love dares yet do more than you have heard him brag to you he will. Shing! Nay, <laughs> if you be an undertaker, 
I am for you. Oh, good Sir Toby. Yeah. Oh, here come the officers. I'll be with you anon. Yeah. Pray, sir, put your sword up if you please. And Mary, I will, will I, sir, and, and for that I promise you I'll be as good as my word. He will bear you easily and reigns well. This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the pursuit of Can Arsenal. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir, no jot. I know your favor well. Though now you have no sea cap on your head, take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you, but there is no remedy. I shall answer it. What will you do now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse? It grieves me much more, more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair kindness you've shown me here, and part being prompted by your present trouble out of my lean and low ability, I'll, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Hold, here's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? Is it possible that my desert chief can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest that it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, nor know I, you, by voice or any feature. I hate ingratitude more in a man than lying, vainness, babbling drunkenness, or any taint of vice or strong corruption that inhabits our frail blood. But oh, heavens themselves. Come, sir, I pray you go. Oh, okay. I don't want to. Pray you go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love and to his image, which methought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. Uh, what's that to us? The time goes by. Away! But oh, how vile an idol proves this god. Thou hast, Sebastian, done good feature shame. In nature there's no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed but the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauteous evil are empty trunks or flourished by the devil. The man grows mad. Away with him. Come. Come, sir. Lead me on. He thinks his words do from such passions fly that he believes himself. So do not I prove true imagination, oh, prove true that I, dear brother, be now taken for you. Uh, come hither, knight, come hither, Fabian. We'll whisper or a couplet or two of most sage saws. He named Sebastian. I, my brother, know yet living in my glass. Even such and so in favor was my brother, and he went still in this fashion, color, ornaments, for him I imitate. Or oh, if it proved tempests are kind and salt ways fresh in love. Mm, a very dishonest, paltry boy, and more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him, and for his cowardship, Ask Fabian. A coward, a most devout coward, religious in it. Lid, I'll after him again and beat him. Do cuff him soundly, but never draw thy sword. And I do not. Mom, let's see the event. I dare lay any money, twill be nothing yet. Will you make me believe that I am not sent for you? <laughs> go to, go to, thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Well, how, well held out in faith, no. I do not know you, nor I am not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her, nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose, neither. <gasps> Nothing that is so is so! I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. 
vent my folly? He has heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly? I am afraid this great lubber the world will pro prove a cockney. I prithee now, ungird thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee. If you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. Ha! Uh, by my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money give themselves a good report after fourteen years' purchase. Now, sir, have I met you again? Oh, there's for thee. Why, there's for thee. And there, and oh. there. Are all the people mad? Hold, sir, or I'll throw your dagger over the house. This will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. Come on, sir, hold. Nay, sir, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him. Uh, if there be any law in Illyria, though I struck him first, yet there's no matter for that. Let go thy hand. Come, sir, I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier, put up your iron. You are well fleshed. Come on. I will be free from thee. What's, what wouldst thou now? If thou darest tempt me further, draw thy sword. Oh, uh, where are we? Where'd we go? Uh, what, what? Nay, then. I must have an ounce or two of this malapert blood from you. She Hold, tell me, hold. On thy life, I charge thee, hold. Adam. Will it ever be thus? Ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves? where manners were ne'er preached, out of my sight. Be not offended, dear Cesaria. Rudes thee, be gone. Let thy, I pretty gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house, and hear there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up, that thou may thereby may smile at this. Thou shalt not choose but go, do not deny. Beshrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in me. What relish is in this? How runs the stream? Or I am mad, or else this is a dream. Let fancy still my sense and lead sleep. If this, if it be thus to dream, still let me, let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee. Wouldst thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so, and so be. Nay, I prithee, put on this gown and this beard, make him believe thou art Sir Topas the curate. Do it quickly. I'll call Sir Toby the whilst. Well, I'll put it on, and I will dissemble myself in it, and I would the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. I am not tall enough to become the function well, nor lean enough to be thought a good student, but to be said, an honest man and a good housekeeper goes as fairly as to say, a careful man and a great scholar. The competitors enter. Oh, by Jove, bless thee, Master Parson. Bonos dear, Sir Toby, for as the old hermit of Prague that never saw a pen and ink very wittingly said to a niece of King Gorboduc, that that is is. So I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. For what is that but that, and is but is? To him, Sir Topus. What ho, oh, I say, peace in this prison! The knave counterfeits well, a good knave. Ah, who calls there? Sir Topus the curate, who comes to visit Malvolio the lunatic. Sir Topas, Sir Topas, good Sir Topas, go to my lady. Out, hyperbolical theme! How vexest thou this man? Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? Well said, Master Parson. Sir Topas, never was man thus wronged. Good Sir Topas, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Fie, thou dishonest Satan! I call thee by the most modest terms, for I am one of those gentle ones that will use the devil himself with courtesy. Sayest thou that the horse is dark? 
Is hell, Sir Topaz? Why, it hath bay windows, transparent as barricados, and the clearest stories toward the south-north are as lustrous as ebony. And yet complainest thou of obstruction? I am not mad, Sir Tobus. I say to you, this house is dark. Madman, thou errest! I say there is no darkness but ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fog. I say this house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell. And I say that there was never man thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it in any constant question. What is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wildfowl? That the soul of the grandam might happily inhabit a bird. What thinkest thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul and in no way approve his opinion. Fare thee well. Remain thou still in darkness. Thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras, ere I will allow of thy wits, and fear to kill a woodcock, lest thou dispossess the soul of thy grandam. Fare thee well. Sir Topas, Sir Topas. My most exquisite, Sir Topas. Nay, I am for all waters. Thou mightest have done this without thy beard and gown. He sees thee not. To him in thine own voice, and bring me word how thou find'st him. I would we were well rid of this knavery, if he may be conveniently delivered, if I would he were. For I am now so far in offence with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety the sport, the upshot. Come by, and by my chamber, to my chamber. Hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Oh, oh, oh. My lady is unkind, purdy. Oh. Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say. She loves another. Who calls, huh? Good fool, as thou ever wilt deserve. Well, let my hand hold me to a candle and, and pen, ink, and paper. As I am a gentleman, I, I will live to be thankful f to thee for it. Master Malvolio? I good fool. <laughs> Alas, sir, how fell you besides your five wits? Fool, there was never man so notoriously abused. I am well in my wits. Uh, sorry. Uh, fool, as thou art. But as well, then you are mad indeed, if you be no better in your wits than a fool. <laughs> they have here propertied me, keep me in darkness, and send ministers to me asses, and, and, and do they all they can face me out of my wits? Advise you what you say. The minister is here. Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits to heaven restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy um, vain bibble babble. Sir Topas! Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who, I, sir? Oh, not I, sir. God by you, Sir Topas. Mary, amen. I will, sir, I will. Fool, 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 I say. Alas, sir, be patient. Oh, what say you, sir? I am shent for speaking to you. Good fool, help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee, I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Well a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am, good fool, some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It, it, it shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter it did. I will help you to it, but tell me true. Are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not, I tell thee true. Nay, I'll ne'er believe a madman till I see his brains. Mm. I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Oh, I requite thee in the highest degree. I pray thee be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you again. In a trice like to the old vice your need to sustain. Who with dagger of laugh in his rage and his wrath Cries, aha, to the devil like a mad lad. Pair thy nails, dad. Adieu, good man, devil. This is the air that is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. No, tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? Do not find him at the elephant. Yet there he was, and there I found this credit. 
that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, no madness, yet doth his accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to answer to any other trust, but that I am mad, or else the lady's mad. Yet if it were so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. But here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, now go with me and with this holy man into the chantry barn. And there before him and underneath that consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of your faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal it while you are willing it shall come to note. What time will we cel our celebration keep according to my birth? What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you. And having sworn truth, ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. Now, as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good Master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. This is to get the dog in recompense, recom, recompense, desire my dog again. Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends? Ay, sir, we are some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly I am an ass, so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. So that conclusions to be as kisses, if your four negatives make your two affirmatives, th why then the worse for my friends and the better for my foes. Why, this is excellent. By my troth, sir, no, though it please you to be one of my friends. <sighs> Thou shalt not be the worse for me. There's gold. But that would be double dealing, sir. I would, you could make it another. Oh, you give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once, and let your flesh and blood obey it. Well, I will be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. Primo, secundo, tertio is a good play. And the old saying is, the third pays for all. The triplic, sir, is a good tripping measure. Or the bells of St. Bennet, sir, may put you in mind. One, two, three. <laughs> you can fool no more money out of me at this throw. If you will let your lady know, I am here to speak with her. And bring her along with you. It may awake my bounty further. Very, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but I would not have you think that my desire of having is the sin of covetousness. But as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I will awake it anon. Here comes the man, sir, that'd rescue me. The face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. A bottling vessel was he captain of, for shall a drop and bulk unprizable. What, with what such scathful grapple did he make with the most noble bottom of our fleet, that very envy in the tongue of loss cried fame and honor on him. What's the matter? Fourth now, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her fraught from candy. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the streets, desperate of fa uh, shame and state in private brabble did we apprehend him. He did me kind of, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what was but distraction. Notable pirates, thou saltwater thief. What foolish bold brought thee to their mercies, whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hast made thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough 
Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me, drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side from the rude seas enraged and foamy mouth did I redeem. A rack past hope he was. His life I gave him and did thereto add my love without retention or restraint, all his in dedication. For his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love, into the danger of this, of this adverse town, drew to defend him when he was beset, where being apprehended his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance and grew a 20 years removed thing while one would wink, denied me my own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before, no interim, not a minute's vacancy. Both day and night did we keep company. Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, thy words of madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me, but more of that anon. Take him aside. What would my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, I... Cesario? Good my lord. My word would speak. My duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What? To perverseness? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul the faithful offsprings have brithed out that ere devotion tendered. What shall I do? Even what please my lord that shall become him. Why should I not? Had I the heart to do it, like the Egyptian thief at the point of death, kill what I love. A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly, but hear me this, since you to non-regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly, him I will tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I am most jocund, apt, and willing to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love more than I love these eyes, more than my life, more by all mores than e'er I shall love my wife. If I do feign, you witnesses above, punish my life for tainting of my love. I me, detested, how am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come, away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Whoa, 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 slow down, Tito. Husband? <laughs> Aye, husband. Can he that deny? Her husband? <sighs> <laughs> no, Lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propi propriety. Fear not, Cesario. Take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as that thou fearest. Oh. Welcome, Father. Father, I do charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold, though lately we intended to keep in darkness that occasion now reveals before it is ripe. What thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A Father? contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, attested by the holy clips of close of lips, strengthened by interchangement of your rings, and all the ceremony of this compact, sealed in my function by my testimony, since when my watch hath told me toward my grave, I have traveled but two hours. Oh, thou dissembling cup! What wilt thou be when time hath showed a grizzle on thy case? Or wilt not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? Farewell, and take her. 
but direct thy feet with thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. Hold a little faith, though thou hast too much to fear. For the love of God, the sturgeon, <laughs> send one presently to Sir Toby. What, what's the matter? He broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb too. Uh -huh. For the love of God, your health. I had rather than 40 pound I were in a house. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, once Zario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario. Oh, it's Leslie, there he is. Uh, you broke my head for nothing. And, and that, that I did, I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You uh, turned upon me without cause, but I bespake you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me! I think you are set nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Oh, here comes Sir Toby halting, where well, you shall hear more. But if he had not been in drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did. How now, gentlemen? How's it with you? A tall one has hurt me, and there's the end on it. Sot, Dick, see, Dick, surgeon, sot. Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour agone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. Then he's a rogue and a passy measures pavin. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him. Who hath made this havoc with him? I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Will you help? An ass head and a coxcomb and a knave, a thin faced knave, a gall. Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. I'm sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman, but had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even the, for the vows we made each other, but so late to go. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. A natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio, oh my dear Antonio, how have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fierce thou that, Antonio? How have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I never had a brother, nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman? What name? What parentage? The wrestling. Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother, too. So when he put it to his... If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. The spirit I am indeed. But I am in the dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate. Were you, uh, were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say... Thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. And died the day when Viola from her birth had numbered thirteen years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul. He finished indeed his mortal act that day that made my sister thirteen years. If not, he wants to make us happy both, but this my masculine usurped attire. Do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune do go here and jump that I am Viola, which to confirm, I'll bring, I'll bring to you a captain when in this town where lie my maiden weeds. I was so help I was preserved to serve this noble count. All the occurrences of my fortune sense have been between this lady and my lord. You have been mistook, but nature to her bias drew in that. You would have been contracted to a maid, 
are you therein by my life deceived? You are both to a maid and man. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy rack. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times thou never shouldst love a woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear, and all those swearings keep as true in soul as doth that orbit continent the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He upon some action is now endurance at Malvolio Suite, a gentleman and follower of my ladies. He shall enlarge him. Fetch Malvolio hither, and yet, alas, now I remember it's me. They say, poor gentleman, he's much distract. A most extracting frenzy of mine own from my resemblance clearly banished his. How does he, Sarah? Truly, madam, he holds Beelzebub at the stave's end, as well as a man in his as well as a, a man in his case may do. Has he writ a letter for you? Uh, I should have given it to you uh, today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, though it stills not much when they are delivered. Oped and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. By the Lord, madam. Come now, art thou mad? No, madam, I do but read madness. And your ladyship will have it as it ought to be. You must allow vox. Pretty, read it in thy right wits. So I do, Madonna, but to read his right wits is to read thus. Therefore, perpend my princess and give ear. Uh, read it, you, Sarah. By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you've put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet I have I the benefit of my sense as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself which right or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought and seek out of my injury. The madly used Malvolio. Malvolio. Did he write this? Aye, oh, madam. This savors not much of distraction. See him delivered, Fabian. Bring him hither. Oh, my lord, so please you these things further thought on to think me well as sister, as a wife. One day shall crown the alliance on it, so please you here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done him, so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, and since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. A sister, you are she. Is this the madman? Ay, my lord, this same. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong, notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No, no. Lady, you have. Pray you peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand or phrase, or say, tis not your seal nor invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then, and tell me in the modest honor why you have given me such clear lights of favor. Made me come smiling to you and cross guarded to you to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people, and acting this in an obedient hope why you have suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, and visited by a priest and made the most notorious geck and gull that air invention played on? Tell me why. Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character. But out of question, tis Maria's hand. For now I do bethink me, twas she who first told me thou wast mad, and then came since smiling, and in such forms were there presupposed upon thee in the letter. Prithee be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. 
Sorry. Baby, it's gone. Sorry about that. Good madam, hear me speak. And let no quarrel nor no brawl to come. Taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at, and hope it shall not. Most freely I confess myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts. We had conceived against him, for he writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance. We recompense whereof he hath married her. How with a sortful malice it was followed, he rather pluck on laughter than revenge. That's the injuries we just weighed. They have on both sides passed. Oh, alas, poor fool, how they have baffled thee. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude, one. Sir Topus, sir, but that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you remember, madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? If you smile not, he's gagged. And thus the whirligig of time brings in his revenges. I'll be revenged on the whole <laughs> pack of you. He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. He hath not told us of the captain yet. When that is known, and golden time convince, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come, for you so shall be while you are a man, but when in other habits you are seen, or seen as mistress, and his fancy queen. When that I was, and a little tiny boy, with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came to man's estate, with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, against knaves and thieves, men shut their gate, for the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came, alas, to wife with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, by swaggering could I never thrive, for the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came unto my beds with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, with tossed pots still had drunken heads, for the rain, it raineth every day. A great while ago, the world begun with hey-ho, the wind and the rain. But that's all one, our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day. Yay! I learned that ditty at Winedale. Beautiful. Yeah. Gorgeous. I say that I was lucky enough to see this performance um, at the Globe in 2018. Yeah. And that finale song, mm -hmm. she just twirled along the stage and then finally jumped down into the pit and let everyone else carry her off. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It was fantastic. Awesome. Was that the all male? So much. No, it was so fantastic, and I love giving myself very small roles in these productions, so I can enjoy all of you very, very talented, wonderful, wonderful actors. So thank you so much. Thank you it's so much. Really for putting it together. Thank, thank Absolutely you. fantastic, guys. Really enjoyed it. <laughs> very fun. All right, see some of you guys this weekend. Excellent. In fact, thank you. Dono, yeah, Dono, join. Zoom Shakespeare. I'll see. I think Send me basically, an yeah. Right. I think I probably Lots. have. I think so. Lots of us. <laughs> and <laughs> I will see uh, next week's um, inebriated read. So stay tuned, Yay. everyone. Yay. Thank you, Nicole. Cool. Thank you, Nicole. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, have all. a good night. Au revoir. Be safe. Good night.